again, it's only me. Uh, this pile of books right here is everything that I've done in my first year of university. If you don't know, I'm in, well, I'm about to say I'm in my first year of illustration, but actually I've just completed my first year around, I think two weeks ago, we officially finished. So these are all the books I managed to fill this year. I mean, I say a year, we've, it's only really been, we started in September, January, February, March, April, May. It's not been a year, it's really been eight months. So this is all the work I've done in eight months. We finished really early for uni, I don't know why we finished so early, but I'm done, it's finished. <laughs> um, this video will be kind of split up into two sections, so I'm gonna go through my books, and when I get to the end of a project, I'm gonna pop onto my Google Slides, which is kind of like an online sketchbook. That was how the teachers would see our work. They never actually looked inside our sketchbooks. They would only really look at our Google Slides. I'm gonna kind of be ping-ponging between the books and the Google Slides, so hopefully this video uh, makes sense and doesn't get too confusing. Anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, just put in this here because my phone number's underneath. This is the first book we did. Um, when we started uni, the first few weeks were very quick, loose sketches. So the work in the beginning of this book isn't that amazing. So bear with it, it gets better as the book progresses, <laughs> I promise. All these first few pages are... And you know like the first sort of day of uni? Oh, I don't know if you've been to uni, but the first sort of day of any art um, class or like A levels or anything, um, they're usually just sort of fun lessons where you do quick loose drawings. That's what all the work here here is. Uh, we got given a picture of a man playing a trumpet, and we had to recreate that as many times as we could in different styles in different media, but also very quickly. <laughs> Then this was kind of homework, we had to take a drawing of our trumpet playing man and kind of just do a page inspired by it. Um, I really like this, this turned out quite nice. This is again more homework, we had to pick a picture from, we had to, well any picture, <laughs> any picture you wanted and draw it but every time you drew it you had to get more abstracted. So this is the original drawing that I did so quite realistic and then the more I drew it the more kind of abstracted it got and then I kind of did a collage of it and the collages kind of got more abstracted as I went along um, yeah so that was quite a fun little project to do uh, this is another lesson we had at uni so the drawings are amazing because um, they really made you move quick <laughs> literally like no longer than three, five minutes spent on all these drawings and we had to do still life, we all brought in our own sort of objects and we had to arrange it on the table and just do some quick drawings from it. This is some life drawing that we did. Again, really quick, two minute sketches, five minute sketches. Some of them turned out better than others. We had to do three drawings, which were either a still life or a life drawing. Um, yeah, so I did these sunflowers. This actually isn't the original. <laughs> This is the original here because I had it in a frame for a bit, but it has since been demoted from the frame. I've replaced it with something else, so yeah. If you are interested, there's a print of this painting on my Etsy shop, which is linked in the description. Um, I'm gonna do that a few times throughout this video because uh, why not promote yourself? <laughs> you know, no one else is gonna promote me, so I've gotta do it myself. Uh, here's a still life, not still life, uh, what's the word? Life drawing that I did. Playing around with mark making and patterns using the same drawing that I did before, like of the trees. More homework, takeaway task, fill four pages with illustrations, which included pattern. So some collage work. I quite like this pattern. This one, I don't really like the colors and just looks a bit weird. Uh, this one right here, here she goes again. <laughs> you can get as a print on my Etsy shop. Uh, this is not the original of this painting because it's currently at the bottom of my stairs in a picture frame because my mum quite liked it. And if you like the look of that, she's only gone and got a print of it. That, that's the last one I'm going to do this video. I did a portrait but tried to, I don't know, do fun little marks on it. Okay, now we're actually getting into the Draw 100 part of this project. So if you remember right at the beginning of this book, I had Draw 100 written, uh, so all this work here is not really related to the Draw 100 stuff, that was just kind of fun little drawing tasks to ease us into university life I suppose. Now we're actually getting into the bulk of this project. Um, draw 100, 
It was called that because we had to draw 100 of an animal. Everyone got assigned a different animal and I got given the eye eye. Yeah, this is just me playing around with different eye eyes, figuring out how to draw them. Some of the drawings are a lot better than others. Some of them aren't actually part of the official 100. In total, I drew a lot more than 100 eye eyes. Um, for example, this was one of my final 100, um, but this just only counted as one. You know, I wasn't there counting every single individual eye eye. So in this book, there's a lot of sketches, but none of them are actually the like the official 100 eye eyes. If that makes any sense. Some of them are, but some of them aren't. Uh, some sketches. This was done with a potato. Uh, I cut it into the shape of an eye eye's face and just started stamping it about. I really got into drawing eye eyes wearing glasses. I really enjoyed doing that. This is some drawings I did for the eye, an eye 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 test, which I kind of arranged on Photoshop so it made sense. I did that a lot. I, I do stuff in this book and then put it, take it into Photoshop where I would arrange it and make it look more finished. Uh, some, this is an acrylic paint, this is watercolour. Some more acrylic paint. Oh, this actually, this was my favourite piece that I, well, one of my favourite pieces that I did for this project. I did it in colour pencils and I just really like the colour palette and the textures I managed to get on the fur. Uh, this was, I just painted some blobs and tried to fit eye eyes inside. This one is the last drawing that I did for all of the eye eyes. I'm very burnt out by this point, so I just kind of drew one to kind of represent how I was feeling at the end of this project. You know, this book's not really in order, I kind of just turned to any page and started drawing. This is the first drawing I did for this project. Just did that in coloured pencil. Uh, 50 of the drawings had to be black and white and then 50 of them had to be in colour. If it was up to me, I would have done them all in colour because black and white's not really my thing. Uh, if you know me and my art, you'll know that I blooming love colour. So trying to do 50 drawings just in black and white was... It was a bit of a challenge for me because I just love using colour so much. Okay, so this is moving on to the next project now, but before I get into this, I'm going to show you my Google Slides, just so this video is kind of in a nice order. So I'm going to show you my Google Slides now, uh, because I did quite a lot of digital work, which obviously you can't see in this book. Okay, so here we are on my Google Slides. Uh, this was a fun little task we did at the beginning of uni, where we just had to do kind of like a two lies, two truths, and you had to just do a picture for each one. So this wasn't really related to anything, this was just fun little get to know each other at the start of uni. Anyway, moving on to actual work now. This sort of stuff I'll just skip through very quickly because it's just little tasks we did whilst in lesson. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this sit here for a little bit. Okay, now we can move on. <laughs> Okay, now we're actually getting on to the eye eye project. So this, in case you don't really know what an eye eye looks like, this is an eye eye, very weird, got this really long finger. And these are all the eye eyes, so quite a lot of them you will have already seen, but also a lot of them I did digitally, which you'll start seeing in a second. This was one of my favourites, I really like this comic. I did this painting of their hands and I kind of tried to turn it into sort of like a rock poster, like a rock band poster, kind of messed around with the hands more to make this weird overlapping pattern. And then with that pattern, I chopped it up even more and messed with it again to turn it into this kind of digital collaged eye eye. And then I turned that into this poster, which is one of my favorite things I did for this eye eye project. I really like how this turned out. A lot of people for this project were making 3D models and the teachers were, they were loving the fact that people were making models so I thought, you know what, I'll jump on the bandwagon and I'll make my own model as well. I wanted to do a fun little comic about the I.I.'s hand with um, them going to the jungle salon to get the nails done all nice. This is, um, you can see how I would arrange things on Photoshop, so in my sketchbook all of these are just kind of scattered about in random places and then I kind of bring them together and arrange them nicely on Photoshop. The I.I. The I.I. Eye test. A weird little gif that I made. My 
they're wizard eye eyes I really like these and I ended up taking this and doing a digital drawing of it but you can tell that I rushed it quite a lot and it's yeah it's really not my finest digital work this so please do not judge my digital ability <laughs> over this one drawing and I tried to turn it into a gif but it kind of went really pixelated when I turned it into a gif and then the final 100 eye eye all right, so that's the end of that project. Now we're going to go back to my book to show you uh, the work in there for the next one. So moving on from Draw 100 now, this is the next project which was called Illuminations. We had to do create an illustration all about a poem. We got given a list of about 20 poems to choose from and I chose this one called what kind of times are these? So these are just some quick thumbnail trying to come up with ideas of how I could get across the mood of the poem without actually you know writing anything or using words. Some more refined thumbnails using my best ideas from the more sketchy ones. So I did five refined thumbnails and from these I ended up taking this one through to my final piece. Another thing about this project is it had to be created out of collage and this is actually kind of the start of when I started to really enjoy getting into collage because before this I'd very rarely used collage and if you know me now you'll know that I use collage all the time. I really really like it so I think it's just fun to look back at where I started and kind of where I am now with collage. So just playing around with colour and shape. I think these pages turned out really nice. This is my favourite page in the whole book. And this is what I ended up doing for the final, and I took this into Photoshop and edited a bit and ed edited it a bit for the final piece. Looking back at the final piece now, I know I could do a lot better, but you know, considering this is one of the first times I'd ever kind of taken collage seriously and given it a proper go, uh, I think it's not too bad of a final piece. Oh, and these are just some really random collages that we did as a bit of, I don't know, a bit of fun. I also did this collage here, which I've got framed on my wall. Okay, now this next book, is my ugly book. Uh, this project mainly consisted of writing. We had to write in a thousand word essay and then to go alongside the essay, we had to do some practical work and create a final poster, which kind of went alongside the essay. So the majority of this project was just writing, which wasn't that exciting. Um, well, that rhymed, that writing, which wasn't that exciting. Uh, but we did do some practical work right at the end. And my project, my, well, my essay was all about, this is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> it was all about intentionally ugly art within the abstract expressionist art movement. It sounds really fancy, but honestly, it wasn't really that fancy. Ugly. I mean, I use the word ugly very loosely. I, I don't even think the paintings in here are even that ugly. I mean, they're messy and they're loose, but I wouldn't say they're ugly. Some of them are ugly, but I don't know. I think some of them are actually quite pretty. Um, and that was actually one of the main feedback that I got off my teacher. He was like, your ugly book isn't that ugly. And I was like, you know what? You have a point there. It's not. It's not really that ugly. But yeah, this is just work I did inspired by the essay that I wrote trying to create work that was ugly but kind of failing because I guess I just struggled to make things look ugly and then from this let me just get to the end of it I filled this book really quickly I think I filled this all just in within a week so I was doing like I don't know 10 pages a day and I was moving really quick So that's my ugly sketchbook and then I took all these drawings and scanned them in and ended up making a poster inspired by them and taking elements of all the different paintings, smushing them together and I made a poster. I think it turned out okay. I wasn't, you know, overly amazed with it. I wasn't that inspired by this project. I just wanted to move on. Okay, so this one I'm going to show you now is our daily practice book. I'm not going to show you the actual book because I'm kind of still working in it uh, and I've done like quite a lot of drawings in it since this project finished. But basically the daily practice project was happening at the same time as everything else and it was just a task that we got given to try and draw something every day. It was a lot to do because obviously uh, we had these other projects going on at the same time so I didn't always manage to get um, a drawing done every day but I really tried to do it. Um, yeah, So these are just some drawings that I did in that sketchbook uh, but I won't show you the actual sketchbook because I imagine one day when I actually finish it I will do a whole separate video just about that one book. But here are just some highlights from the drawings that I did. I did a lot more than this, but I just didn't put them all on my slides. 
so that's my daily practice book hopefully one day when I get round to finishing it and um, there will be a completely separate video on my channel just about this book uh, but it won't be for quite a while because I'm only halfway through Okay, moving on to the next book. I started a new book, so this is all the work I did after Christmas. Project right after Christmas, we started, it was called, what was it called? A uh, person of note. We had to create a poster all about a person. We got a list of about 20 people to choose from and I chose Daniel Lismore. He's a very extravagant designer. He makes these amazing outfits and we had to create a poster all about them but number one rule was we weren't allowed to use their face or their portrait in any way. It had to be a poster about them, but that didn't actually use them. It had to embody their likeness and their characteristics without actually showing them, like the person themselves. So this is some initial sketches all inspired by his outfits. Some collages inspired by his outfits. Um, I had a lot of fun with this project. And I was really happy that Daniel Lismore was on the list of people to choose from because he's just so, you know, he's just full of inspiration. All the colours he uses, all the textures, all the fabrics. So these are all just kind of quick sketches and experimental work inspired by him. And then we're moving on to kind of coming up with a final concept now. So these are some quick sketches and thumbnails trying to come up with everything and anything that I could do with him. And then from these three pages of sketches, I did these, how many did I do? Three, I did three more refined thumbnails of kind of more polished ideas. And from those three, I ended up choosing this as my final concept that I did for my final piece. And this was the third thumbnail here. This was me trying to figure out the colors, not the colors, the value, the value of the final piece. After I decided what my actual concept was, it was kind of going back to the drawing board and figuring out like, well, what, what media am I gonna use for this final piece? What color am I gonna use? What patterns? Um, so this is me just trying to figure out all that sort of stuff. And then here we actually have part of the final piece. Um, I did this big collage here and then I worked on it digitally. Uh, it took me around, I think this was three days it took me to do this. I will go onto my Google Slides now and show you a bit more work from this project and then also the final piece in its finished form. So this was the person of notes. So I started, I was a bit um, torn between um, either doing Ada Lovelace who is a mathematician or Daniel Lismore but as we all know I ended up going for Daniel Lismore so I started the project just by doing lots of research about him and then moving on to the practical work which you've already seen but there are a few new things on these slides like this page here I kind of rearranged all of them to try and make outfits a little task we had to do in lesson, well during an online lesson where I was learning about composition and we had to go out and take pictures. Some more practical work all inspired by Daniel Lismore and then moving on to my refined thumbnails and this is the one like I said before that I ended up going for. Some more research trying to figure out which colours Daniel uses um, which is basically all the colours. <laughs> A little jumble digital collage thing that I did out of cutting shapes out of paintings, quick loose paintings that I did and trying to arrange them into a blob. This is when I was still trying to figure out which media to use. Trying to figure out what colours to do the final piece. I ended up going for, what did I do? I kind of did a mix of this one and this one for my final. And these are just progress shots of my final piece coming together. And then here we have the final piece which I'm still really proud of and I, it, I don't know, I just think it turned out really nice. It's, it's one of my finest pieces, I think. I still really like it now. So that's the end of this project, moving on to the next one. Okay, so we're moving on from this project now and uh, the pages that you'll see, okay, this is gonna be a bit of a mishmash from now on because we had two projects at the same time. They're kind of not in a proper order in this book. So this is gonna be work from kind of two projects at the same time that you see in here. One of the projects we had to create a manifesto. A manifesto is a fancy word for a list of rules that your art follows and then the other project that we had going on at the same time was we had to create a gif, like an animation, a looping animation about anything basically, an animation about anything you wanted. So here we have frames from an animation that I did of a sunset and this is some more stuff that I did for an animation. Some more animating 
this is an animation I did of this kind of swoop swoop thing going on but it didn't really turn out amazing. Originally when I was doing my gift project I wanted to do an animation of people hugging um, but that kind of got I don't know, I kind of lost all my inspiration for that and wasn't inspired by it anymore and I ended up doing something completely different. This is going, oh this is such a mess. This is work for the manifesto stuff now, do you remember me talking about that? Uh, a manifesto, we had to do a poster which was filled with six rules about what our art is about, what my art is about. Um, each rule had to have its own illustration but they all had to be within the same poster and kind of work all together as a final piece. Um, alongside a bit of writing. So that was this project. So this is just me coming up with ideas for my manifesto. Everything on this side is work for my GIF project and everything over here is for my manifesto project. Kind of final thumbnails, trying to come up with something for this project. I was a bit stuck with this project. I didn't really know how to arrange everything. I had my six ideas and my six illustrations, but trying to put them all together into one final poster was a bit of a struggle. That's the end of these two projects in this book. So that was a bit of a mess. Hopefully that made sense. I'm going to show you my online slides now, which will hopefully be a bit more easy to follow. This is the GIF project, which was called How It Works. So there's a lot on these slides which I haven't already seen. Um, this is very um, glitchy and slow at the moment because there's just a lot of GIFs going on and it's kind of hard for my computer to run it all because I'm also doing the screen recording at the same time. I had no idea what I wanted to do for my final piece so I just started messing around with a bunch of different styles of animation until one kind of stuck. Uh, this is a really quick one I did of an orangutan although it kind of turned out a bit bad. It, it's not the smoothest motion. <laughs> Um, this one I'm actually quite proud of, uh, I did this all digitally, I animated it on Photoshop actually which is, it, it's not the best <laughs> animation software to be honest, it was a bit of a pain to use. And um, I ended up using for my final piece an animation software called Critter, which is just much better to use than Photoshop. It's, Photoshop's good for animating simple things but not for sort of things like this. This is a painting that I did and every couple brush strokes I scanned it in so you could see the painting actually like come into life. Oh this is a bit, <laughs> this is moving very quickly. This is a scan I did of a bunch of different pieces of collage that were all left over from my Daniel Lismore thing um, and then I just kind of scanned them all in different positions, popped them together really quickly to make this thing here. And then I did this little star animation which I made by kind of drawing on top of the frames from the, uh, the other thing I did. Here's my sunset animation which you saw before. Um, I put all these frames together to make this. Oh this one was fun. Uh, this is a stop motion one I did. I used to do a lot of stop motion as a kid with Lego so it was really fun to kind of go back and do stop motion again because it had been so long. I just did it out of play though. Uh, I just used my phone. I just got a uh, stop motion app on my phone. This is another quick task we had to do in a lesson. Just find objects from around the house and take pictures of them. I quite like this one. Then we had to make sort of a comic with our objects that we found. Now moving on to kind of coming up with my final idea because I've done all those practice pieces before of just a bunch of different ways of making animations and then I was trying to come up with an idea now. I came up with this hugging idea because I wanted to do something kind of show how nice it would be when we can finally hug again. Hey which is now we're actually allowed to hug now so yay. <laughs> But in the end I didn't use this idea because I just kind of lost all motivation for it in the end. Um, but this is a kind of mock I did of that animation. This is kind of what I wanted the movement to look like when I was planning on drawing it all by hand. Figuring out colours and then this is, I drew this all by hand and you can see all the individual frames for the animation because so I was trying to figure out how to make um, this sort of swoop that comes up from the people. In the end I just really didn't care about this concept anymore, I just wanted to do something different, it wasn't inspiring me. Sometimes it's best to just start again and that's what I did because I had this other idea, um, how clouds float and I could just picture it so perfectly in my head um, and I just wanted to do that instead so I kind of started again and these are all the individual things that came together to make that animation and these are all the textures that I used. And here you can see the kind of behind the scenes of how it all came about. I did it by kind of drawing it all loosely, just in red first, a bit of behind the scenes. It's an absolute mess, get ready for this. <laughs> you can just see how I kind of plonked the textures in and just um, rubbed out where I didn't want them to be. 
but at first I wanted to put a face on the cloud but um, decided it didn't really need it. Uh, here we have the final animation and I'm so happy with how this turned out. Okay, so now we're on the slides for my manifesto project. Uh, this project started with mainly writing, so the first few slides, they're all just writing, which I'll skip through quite quickly. Oh, this is actually fun. Uh, we had a lesson where we had to make um, a scene that kind of gave you a feeling for the person who lived there. Uh, we didn't have very long to do this as well, we had about two hours. I was rushing around the house trying to make this tiny little living room for a mouse and yeah, I think it turned out really cute. <laughs> this was the first draft for my manifesto, so we had to write six rules which we wanted our art to follow. Um, so this is the first one I did but I ended up changing it quite a lot for my final. So moving on now to actually making the final piece, so now we're getting on to actual practical work. These are all the sketches that I did, and then these are my final thumbnails. I've ended up using this for my final, but I still changed it quite a lot. Oh, this is the final manifesto. Yeah, I just wanted to change a few things. I decided to do this piece digitally, which I don't do a lot of digital art, especially not in this sort of style. I was doing it all kind of by creating shapes and using the multiply tool to make them all kind of go see-through and overlap each other which is a style I've never really done before so it was quite challenging. I feel like the final piece, I, I, I like it but if I was to do it again I would change a lot of things. I just feel like it's a bit cluttered. And here's the final manifesto. Um, I still, I, like I said, I do like it. I think the colours are nice and it's it's got like a cool sort of composition with the swoop. I don't like how this writing sort of pushed down in the corner. It looks a bit like an afterthought. At the same time, I just really didn't want to include this piece of writing on it. But you had to, that was part of the, the brief. But I just didn't really didn't want to include the writing and I think that's apparent because I kind of just shoved it in this bottom corner. Yeah, that's the manifesto. Moving on to the next project. Alright, so everything else in this book now is for our final project, which was called Places. If you watched my last video, you'll be quite familiar with that project because I did a whole video about me creating my final piece, which I think is quite a good video. So if you haven't seen it, I really recommend you watch it because I think it's one of my finest. This is the beginning of that project. We had to create sort of a proposal talking about what we actually wanted to do because you get given a lot of freedom. Basically, we just got told you've got to create a 16 page book about a place and then they're like right go ahead go and do that and it's like ah pressure uh, I need to come up with ideas and eventually I came up with the idea of making the book about my dad's bike ride to work um, so everything you're going to see now is work for that project coming up with stuff for that 16 page book oh actually you know what I'll show you something else first I started the Places project by making this little book. I decided to just kind of hand make a book because I've been wanting to do it for a while and I thought this was a pretty good opportunity to, to do that. So I started the project by just doing lots of very loose, kind of abstract, quick, um, not too precious about them drawings where I was just kind of going in straight away and if a, mis if a mistake was made, hey ho, it wasn't really a big deal because this book was kind of just supposed to be a place to mess around and experiment. So I ended up doing the project about my dad's bike ride to work. All the drawings in this book are just kind of taken directly from that route. He has a camera on the front of his bike, uh, which obviously records his route, records his ride to and from work. So I took the footage off of that. And then I just did loads of drawings inspired by uh, the footage that uh, obviously the camera on his bike captured. I actually have a YouTube video where I showed myself making this book and also filling the book which I think is, again, quite a nice video. So if you're interested in how this book was made and just kind of any of the work I've showed you so far in this video, uh, I have a lot of videos showing a lot of the work that you've seen. And they'll all be on the playlist called uh, A Week of Art, if you're interested. <laughs> Okay, so now I've shown you that little book. 
Uh, this will all kind of make a bit more sense now. A lot of the drawings in this book from now on were all inspired by that little book that I did. I took kind of the best ideas from that and also kind of came up with some new ones as well and um, started making the final book. So the, the final piece had to be a 16 page book all about this journey, about my dad's bike ride to work. I planned out the book and all the pages that would go into it and just started making it. I did a little practice book first. Where's that? This is only a few pages from it. So I did some practices first before I moved into making the final illustrations. And I have, like I said before, I have a video documenting the entire process of this book being made. I'm quite proud of it. It's one of my best videos. What you're seeing now are all the finished illustrations which end up going into this book. Some of them don't end up going into the book. I did a lot of pieces which kind of didn't really make the cut. I did them and wasn't super happy with them but I still obviously didn't want to throw them away. I still wanted to show that I'd done them. Like for example, this didn't end up going in the final book and neither did this. this book I did a mix of collage as well as coloured pencils and oil pastels. I think that's everything. Yeah that's all the medias I used for the book. So these are all the finished illustrations which went in the book and um, there's also this which I pop up on screen now which is currently in a frame so I can't show it because the frame is being used to stop the camera falling off my shelf. So here's that illustration. I took all these drawings and put them into InDesign which is where you kind of lay out books and made it into a, a fully finished book. I don't actually have it with me at the moment because I don't have access to a printer good enough to print it out. But I just have a digital version of it which I'll pop up on screen now. And here we have the final book. If you watched my last video, this will be very familiar because I've basically just shown all this sort of stuff. Um, so hopefully this video uh, was fun to watch. I know it was a long one, so thanks for making it to the end. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.